Yes, so, yes. Uh, a good morning to all the participants. I welcome once again uh, to the second day of this entrepreneurship development program uh, on flexible 3D printing operation and prototype development sponsored by Nectar. Uh, once again, we are privileged to have amongst us uh, Professor M. Durai Silvan, Professor from the Department of uh, Production Engineering, NIT 3G. Uh, so with this brief, uh, I would like to hand over the session to Adurai Silvan, sir. Sir, please, you may proceed. Hello, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Subhaji. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, right now I am in the uh, entrance of uh, the Siemens Center uh, of Excellence in Manufacturing where we have the uh, our 3d printing and we have one more center here um, uh, would you able to see me yes sir yes sir. you are visible yes yes yeah okay uh, so uh, uh, we'll be having a live demo with uh, some of uh, our uh, scholars help also and uh, this center actually uh, inaugurated in 2018 and uh, it is having a uh, complete product lifecycle management related software and we have a exclusive robotics lab a cnc machines lab a cnc controller lab then a product design validation lab all those things and this rapid prototyping is one lab in which we have the fuse deposition modeling based 3d printer and one more center for advanced manufacturing also got inaugurated in the last year in that uh, we got the 3d metal printer so we will start with the uh, what do you say uh, the fdm based 3d printer first and then we will uh, go ahead uh, with the uh, rest of the uh, proceedings right so now i am going uh, to that uh, rapid uh, manufacturing lab please yeah so just to show uh, these are some of the labs what is available in the center as I said earlier, we have a robotics, CNC machines, rapid prototyping, advanced manufacturing, CNC controller. Then we have test and optimization, product design and validation, then mechatronics, Internet of Things, automation and process instrumentation. And in this rapid prototyping lab, uh, we have a Statasis F270 based uh, 3D printing uh, machine. And uh, this is one of the uh, highly used printer by uh, our students as well as uh, many industries. And now we will move on to that particular lab uh, uh, to demonstrate further. You can show the ambience. So now we are into the RPT lab and uh, what is the machine you are seeing here? It is a uh, uh, Statasis uh, F270 uh, FDM based uh, 3D printer and uh, Hello, excuse as, me, sir. Yeah, yeah. So your video is not uh, actually we are not able to see the video. Uh, not able to see the video? Yes, Just yes. a moment. Okay. Are you able to see that? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Not yet. Just, just, just a moment. Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. Now, now yeah. it is visible, sir. Now it is visible. Okay. Yes, yes. So this is uh, uh, Statasis 270 uh, FDM based machine, and uh, where we are using extensively for our uh, uh, FDM based 3D printing application. We have some small uh, printers also, like here. And uh, these printers uh, normally used for some student projects. And uh, when you know that uh, the three printers that is coming, starting with uh, 50,000 rupees until going to few crores. And uh, for.
this kind of a printers and for a uh, uh, quite uh, commercial applications probably you can use uh, this kind of a printer and uh, uh, yeah uh, here what is that you are seeing inside uh, this is the uh, bed in the uh, bottom uh, from that uh, we'll be starting the build uh, layer by layer and uh, maybe i will show later once uh, the printing started uh, what is that uh, how the uh, spool uh, that is being fed and uh, uh, here there are two spools what you can see one is uh, uh, the primary material spool another one is the uh, sub, uh, support structure spool uh, this support structure spool will be having uh, some lesser strength compared to the primary uh, spool and uh, as uh, i have explained earlier uh, uh, this will be melted by the extrusion head and uh, basically this particular fdm based printer uh, that is coming uh, under a solid based uh, am process and uh, you can see that uh, it is in a wire form and the wire is fed continuously and we have also, uh, actually four different chambers here so this uh, four chambers Bay one, two, three, four, uh, generally used for uh, loading uh, additional spools uh, when you are printing uh, 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 bigger components. And uh, actually, the size of uh, the printer, uh, which can accommodate uh, one cubic feet, it is very bigger, and uh, uh, that is uh, uh, maybe required some kind of a, a spool interchange in between. So in order to accommodate all those things, so we have some kind of a, a support, uh, a additional supplementary uh, compartment also. So this will, uh, this can print uh, with the accuracy of starting with 130 micrometer to 400 micrometer. And uh, now I will uh, leave it to uh, Subo Murari, uh, who is a, a technician here uh, who is handling this printer quite extensively and he will continue to demonstrate i will be there in the background to uh, uh, answer any uh, questions subham over to you yeah no how you are proceeding you can Is he audible? Subha Murari, is he audible? No, sir, not yet. No, not yet. Okay. Hello, uh, good afternoon, uh, good morning. Uh, Master Shubham Murari. And I'll be taking further the session uh, here for uh, uh, additive manufacturing for polymer. And first of all, we'll be going uh, through the graphical software, which we use to uh, integrate the printer with uh, the computer system. And uh, we will learn about the various commands in it. And uh, how are we, uh, what to say, the modifying the CAD model that is already present to us. And uh, uh, how are we going to scale it and uh, make it uh, the desolation file? After that, we'll go through the live demo of the open part, which we are going to actually print. And uh, then we'll be uh, seeing how it is printing and uh, what are the post processing processes for uh, a fully made component. So now I'll be sharing the screen and showing you the graphics software.
Hello. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Hello again. Uh, I hope you, uh, my screen is visible to you. And uh, so yes, this is the interface visible, of the Dropcat software. So uh, here, as we can see, you can see the virtual uh, build tray tray as we saw in the machine. And here we are going to place the component uh, which we are going to print the CAD model of that. Okay. So for that, uh, we'll be first uh, including some. Uh, what do you say? We will be including some CAD model from the system, and then we'll see how we can uh, be using various commands, edit it, and make the standard tessellation file of it. Okay. So first, uh, we'll go to add models. And we have one sample uh, CAD model here. We can import it. And uh, if we zoom in, we can see one model have, has been imported. But here uh, we can see some error is there. That model is very small. Okay. So we need to rectify that. So one by one, I will go through every command and uh, tell you how, uh, how does every command work. And uh, then we will uh, look into how we can rectify this error that uh, model is very small. Okay. So first uh, on the right hand side, we can see the model view is active. So the view we are looking at the, this uh, viewing window, this is the model view of it. Okay. So the second one is the error mode analysis mode. So if uh, suppose uh, while importing any CAD model, if there are any uh, loss of data or any error in the prepaid model. Model. Okay. Then we can rectify it through this analysis mode. Okay. So, uh, had it been any error in this model, then we can simply click here, repair all models and all the, uh, models would, all the, uh, er, er, um, the errors would be rectified. Okay. So, uh, the next is slice preview. So uh, what it does, we can, uh, before actual printing, we can see how layer by layer, uh, each component would be printed. So if we play the animation, it would show how layer by layer each, uh, each uh, geometry is going to be printed like this. And, uh, color coding is also done that green color. It is showing as the modern material, which is the actual build uh, material. And the orange one is the support material, which is provided so that the structure remains uh, intact. Okay. So if we come out of this, then the next one is the uh, model information uh, regarding the, uh, the dimensions. So here we can see the units is mm. So we want an mm only. So we will leave it mm. So tray settings. You now this is important. If uh, here when we go, uh, we can see that uh, the model model material it is showing ABS. So currently we uh, the uh, given machine is calibrated for ABS only. So uh, we will leave it as it is. Next is slice height. So in this, uh, uh status is, uh, F 270 machine, uh, three slice height, uh, only four slice height are, uh, are available. So lesser the slice height or the, uh, layer thickness, the higher would be the surface finish. Okay. So the first one is 0 0.005 inches. Second one is 0 0.007 inches. Next is 0 0.1 inch and next one is 0 0.13 inches. So, um, uh, if we want, if we want very intricate details and high surface finish, we can go for the lowest, uh, slice height. And if we want just for demonstration purpose, if we are doing the printing, then we can go for higher slice height also. So I will go for the highest slice height since it is for demonstration purpose only. The support material we are using is QSR. So, uh, here you can see QSR is written. So we will leave it as it is also. And support tape is also uh, already calibrated. So we don't need to touch anything here. So the next setting is the model settings. Now, uh, how the uh, body infilling is going to be done. So, uh, suppose uh, for each uh, layer, uh, suppose if you have to create a rectangle in some layer, how the inside of the rectangle is going to be filled. That's, uh, that's what is decided here. So according to our need and, uh, what do you say the structural integrity that we demand according to that, uh, we can uh, choose any one of these, uh, five. So first one is sparse. We can see it is, it is written that best used for further reducing the density when structural integrity is not a primary concern. For example, we have to make an ornamental or some demonstration purpose uh, component only. So we can use the sparse, uh, infill method. 
so because uh, uh, the structural integrity uh, we we are not requiring that very much okay next one is sparse double dense so suppose we want a little bit structural integrity but uh, the major concern is only just the uh, demonstration purpose only so we can use the sparse double dense it is a higher it has just a little bit higher structural integrity than sparse but still uh, it can be, cannot be used for load bearing purposes so third one is hexagram uh, infill method uh, which is the optimized uh, between the material uses as well as the structural integrity so we can uh, it can it, it is a trade off between the uh, minimum material uses as well as without compromising with the structural integrity of the com final component but if we want even higher structural, integ structural integrity and the uh, build material uses is not a such high concern then we can go for sparse high density uh, best used for high structural integrity when solid infill may cause build issues. So it is used for in those cases. And the final one is the solid fill. There are no porous spaces in between. It is fully filled. Uh, the whole layer is fully filled with the model material. So these are the five uh, different infill styles. Since again we are uh, using it for demonstration purpose only right now. So we will use the sparse uh, infill style. So automatically you can see it has taken all the parameters, infill density, body thickness and infill angle. So we can go for the next one. So next one is the support material. Uh, so support material where, where it has to insert, it would automatically take according to the uh, need. Here we can see the support style is smart. So automatically it would take uh, wherever uh, the overhanging structure or the collapsible uh, parts are there, it would automatically provide a support structure so that while printing the uh, below layers, it doesn't fall off. So uh, this also is done. We don't need to do anything here. Next is stabilizer. So we need it for uh, if the component is very big and leaning kind of structure is there, then we would be needing stabilizers. But since here the model is very small, so we won't be needing any stabilizer component here. Uh, next is anchor. It is used uh, to uh, fix the build material to the base plate and, uh, and while printing it doesn't move or uh, shift away from the printing position. So it is also gen uh, again generally used when the many uh, very high building layers are there, high number of layers are there. But since uh, again we are printing very small component for demonstration purpose only, we won't be needing any anchors here. So next is oh, arrange. Sorry. Now uh, if we can see here, the uh, here we can see that uh, optimize and model spacing terms are given. So uh, if suppose if more than one components are there in this uh, mm -hmm. table. So what we can do, we need to arrange it such a way that uh, the uh, two components do not mix together while printing and at the same time the nozzle should not move, uh, should not travel very far away while printing to, uh, the two of them. Otherwise it would be a, uh, what do you say, the wasteful, uh, wasteful motion of the nozzle and it would be uh, the unproductive motion of the nozzle. So we can optimize the uh, contents on this tray and if I do this. It would automatically create an automatic adjustment and uh, create a tray, uh, an optimized position of this tray. Now again, the orient. Uh, uh, now it should be uh, properly oriented so that uh, what is uh, the minimum numbers of layers are there. Suppose if we have to print a, a cylinder, if we print it upright, then the number of layers would be higher. But if we uh, print it uh, while sleeping in sleeping position, then the number of layers would be lesser. So uh, in this way, it can automatically orient it to the base plate so that the minimum time is taken to print the uh, that component. In both the cases, standing or sleeping position, the total number of uh, cubic inches of the material use would be same, but the time taken would uh, differ very highly. So we can auto orient it and according to that, that it would automatically, uh, we can see it is the best possible position for this particular component. Now the scaling. Now uh, we can see that it is showing that model is very small. So for that we can do the scaling here. If I do 200%, so it would become twice the size of it. And we can see the error has gone. So again, if we want to, I want to increase it to 1000%. So 10 times it would become, or if I do it 2500 times, then it would become like this only. So now we can see it is a 
proper component uh, we can say uh, properly printable component we are able to see here so uh, you must be no noticing uh, along with this uh, cad model that i have imported there is another structure uh, beside it this dumbbell kind of structure so this is known as the purge material and it is printed to ensure the utmost quality of the actual uh, build component so what it does the nozzle while uh, with, while it prints the first layer so first of all it doesn't uh, doesn't print this uh, build component it goes and prints this uh, purge material prints first layer of it inspects the quality of it if the quality is good then only it goes uh, to print uh, this uh, actual build component then again it does the same thing prints the second layer of purge material again if quality is uh, acceptable then only it goes to print the actual second layer of the component and it does for the each layer so the number of layers of the build component is equal to the number of layers in the purge material so you can see both of them are equal in height both of them are equal in height so both have same number of layers so like this if we go we can see uh, we can now estimate if we select and estimate the total number of time it would take to print Okay, now it is saying that generated models are too close and we need to uh, ar again arrange the tray. So again, we can go here and uh, arrange this tray for optimized uh, distance. Now it has changed the configuration and this is the most optimum position for this uh, component. Now, if we go and estimate, it would show me that the, uh, this is the model uh, material taken and the part time would be 34 minutes. In 34 minutes, it would be completely printed. So now we can give this, uh, we can select the printer from here. It is already selected here and uh, we can give the print command to the printer. And now we'll uh, go back to the printer and see how it is actually printing the component. Yeah, so as we can see here, uh, the job is already in the queue and if we select and uh, Okay, so uh, if we give the print command, it would automatically uh, tell us the position and then start printing. So first of all, the layer would go to the topmost position. Vignesh, uh, I think uh, you have stopped uh, sharing. We are not able to see the screen. Yes, yes sir. Actually, we will be sh uh, showing the uh, mission. Give me a minute. Okay, okay, okay. Fine, fine. Uh, I think the machine is visible now. Yes, yes, it is visible. Yeah, yeah. So as uh, you can see here that uh, the uh, build plate has go gone to the topmost position and it would start printing the first layer of the purge component. And then uh, if the quality it finds good, then it would print the first uh, layer of the build component. And then the plate would be plate would be brought down by uh, the distance of the slice height that we have given. That is 0.13 inches. It would uh, come down and then the second layer would be printed and this process would repeat till the total number of layers are printed. So here we can see what are the total number of layers. Once the printing starts, right now it is preheating and uh, once the preheating ends, then it will show us the total number of layers that it has to print. So this process will keep on repeating till the, all the layers are completed. Then we can take this uh, component out and uh, then we can move it to this wave wash tank so this is the post processing for the uh, printed component here we can see that uh, this is a wave wash tank and inside there is the uh, an alcohol solution is there so uh, earlier as we told uh, it was it was told that uh, there are two components support material and the build material 
and the support material was a uh, little bit uh, lesser in structural integrity as well as have lower melting point than the build material reason being since support material is only only for the support purposes while printing and after printing it serves no purpose so what we what we do we uh, put the printed component inside it and uh, we close and give here we can see for uh, so any temperature suppose 85 degree 70 60 for some uh, high temperature we uh, set it for some particular time suppose if we set it for some particular time suppose 1 hour 15 minutes if we set then the since the uh, support material has lesser uh, temperature than the build material so it dissolves in the solution while the uh, build material remains as it is okay so uh, here you can see uh, this is the actual uh, printed component of the command we just gave so the final uh, printed product will look like this after all the pre post processing and all it would look like this and this is the purge material i was telling you about so again if you see they are, they both are having the same height okay so uh, this is the scraper that we can use to remove this uh, uh, printed component out from the uh, build plate and uh, then we can put it inside the wave wash tank and all the post processing may be done the printer is over um, uh, it is taking some time to preheat maybe uh, now it is you can see that uh, it reaches 80 degrees centigrade it has to go up to 90 uh, so that uh, the printer will start and in the meantime in the fdm printer if you have any uh, clarification uh, you can ask me uh, uh, so that uh, before uh, looking at uh, uh, printing uh, one or two layers uh, we can spend time in uh, clarifying your queries, please. If any queries. Okay, any queries from the participants? Any questions? Sir, I have a doubt. Yes, please. Hello, sir. Sir, uh, we often see we use 3D printers to print foldable material. So, sir, how is that done? Like foldable uh, bottles and glasses, sir, how is that done? No, actually, uh, what is the material right now we are using? It is a uh, ABS and a PLA. Uh, ABS, it is a kind of a thermo uh, setting plastic. It is acrylone nitrile butad and styrene. And PLA, again, it is a thermo set plastic uh, polymer. And uh, these are the polymers uh, that is not uh, foldable. It is very stiff. And uh, if you wanted to have this kind of uh, uh, flexible material printing, then you need to go with uh, uh, certain polymers which are flexible. And we don't have that kind of a facility here. Uh, and uh, they normally do with uh, uh, other uh, printing technology. And even uh, they are printing uh, rubber hoses and other uh, flexible materials using that one. Uh, that is highly possible. So it uh, depends on what are the kind of a material that you are uh, using to print that one. Thank you, Okay, I think uh, it needs another seven minutes to uh, uh, preheat that one. Uh, maybe what uh, I can do, uh, uh, I can go to that uh, metal 3D printer. Uh, then uh, again, uh, from here, they can switch on the video once it is ready. Shortly, we will break in. Uh, then we will continue with the uh, metal printing. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, I will be moving out uh, there. Uh, so, in a uh, uh, few seconds time, I will be starting adjustments. So, give me a few minutes, few seconds, I will go that way. Yes, sir. Okay.
So this is uh, extension of the uh, manufacturing COE, another uh, center. So I think I have some uh, little network issue. All rich. So we have some uh, network issue, and uh, this is the video. Yeah, so I'm in the center for uh, advanced manufacturing and uh, yeah so we have uh, four different laboratories here this is uh, laser uh, processing lab and in that we have uh, one femtosecond laser where we are doing a lot of uh, uh, micro machining related application and uh, uh, this uh, we are using for a variety of micro channel creation, micro texturing, mostly on tribological part. And this is one uh, pulse laser welding system. And uh, only last week we got installed one more laser system for uh, marking. And this is a high temperature uh, indentation tester. And uh, this is uh, used for uh, uh, doing uh, uh, elevated temperature harness up to 500 degrees centigrade. You can characterize the materials, elastoplastic property, and at high temperature, how it behaves, all those uh, information that we can get it out, get out of it. Then we have a laser peening laboratory, and we have a dedicated uh, peening laser. And the peening laser, uh, you may be knowing that it is used for uh, improving the fatigue property by putting in some compressive residual stresses inside. And uh, the laser is from UK, Litron. And we have a, a 2.5 uh, joules laser. And at uh, 1 mm or 2 mm diameter, we can get a gigawatts of uh, energy out of it. And we are doing for uh, mostly on the turbine blades, improving the fatigue property by uh, putting in some CRS. And we are characterizing using X ray diffraction how uh, that behaves. And uh, now we are entering into the additive manufacturing lab where we have our uh, metal 3D printer. So the printer, what you are seeing here, it's a Ampro SP500 twin laser system. And uh, uh, with that printer, uh, uh, we are uh, making out uh, the metal based uh, 3D printed components. Now, uh, uh, Mr. Jagadish, who is uh, a scholar, uh, will give uh, over 10 minutes uh, short uh, video as well as combined presentation of how uh, we are starting uh, the printer from a design. And uh, later, I will again join again uh, to explain with the live demo. Jagadish, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. So I would like to just uh, give a brief idea about what are all the set of operations that we need to do to get a complete uh, metallic uh, products from this uh, 3D printer. So let me share my screen. <clears throat> uh, is my screen visible? Yes, yes, it is visible. It's visible. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, so we are using a proprietary software called Materialize Magix. So this uh, software is particularly uh, necessary to create these supports, right? So metallic uh, additive manufacturing requires support structures, not only for anchoring the parts or giving uh, actual support, but also for reducing the uh, residual stresses that arise during the melting and solidification of the powder particles. So basically this printer is a uh, laser powder bed fusion process. You might have already heard about it. So, uh, so let me start with the support generation and modification. 
in Metalize Magic's uh, software. This is a short video on how this software works. Then I'll go for the actual uh, things. So when the part is uh, loaded into the uh, software, we create automatic uh, support generation uh, module wherein we have multiple options like block support, line support, gusset, cone, etc. So we have all the options to edit the supports in the Metalize Magic's window themselves. And among the support parameter pages, we have common, advanced, volume, lot of other options to edit them. So creating these support structures require experience and a lot of talent. So basically, uh, if you observe in the uh, right hand side, you have uh, options to edit the block or line support. And uh, if you observe closely, this particular support structure is touching the actual part. So that would be uh, giving a lot of work to us in terms of grinding or something. So what we are going now is to provide an angled or platform projection area so that the support structure will not be touching the metallic part. So we are giving the interactive angle and uh, we can move the support structure so that it is not actually touching the metallic part, but it is giving the proper support. So all types of options are available. So we have procured this software for uh, particularly for uh, the, our uh, metallic uh, 3D printer. <laughs> Lot of other options are also there. Uh, you can uh, work around with that. So if you observe in the right hand side, we can link, we can alter the hatching space so that we can recover more powder as well as the support removal from the build plate would be easier. So we should not compromise the anchoring, but we should not. We should all also give a provision to recover the, uh, you know, powder from the build plate. So we can give perforations. We can give fragmentations and lot of other op operations we can do. And finally, after altering all these parameters, we can save that profile for uh, future reference in case we can copy the same parameters again. So uh, this is one kind of an operation that is needed, uh, particularly for this uh, metallic 3D printer. And uh, we can also add, in case some areas require more support, we can add uh, cones or gussets. You know, we have options over here. So these options can be used to uh, give manual supports in case we feel that these parts are not properly supported and require more support. Uh, the software provides all kind of, uh, you know, uh, tips to us. So uh, with this software, uh, we can uh, reduce uh, a lot of uh, support support structures. We can uh, improve part quality, recover more powder, and a uh, lot of other uh, things are there. So Materialize is the leading uh, software provider for this purpose, and uh, that's all for this segment. <clears throat> the next would be the actual slicing. So Materialize also gives a particular. Uh, operation called uh, slicing that you might have already gone through in your uh, uh, FDM uh, status is printer as well. The same thing here also we are doing, uh, particularly we are opting for 40 micrometer layer thickness. And uh, with this parameter, we are going to slice the STL file along with the support structure, right? So uh, the sliced file should be in a format called uh, CLI uh, format, uh, the extension is CLI. And those uh, files need to be input into the uh, metallic 3D printer. The Ampro print controller software is inbuilt with the uh, printer soft, uh, printer uh, machine. Uh, I'll be briefly uh, telling about that. Yeah. So this is the uh, print controller software. And if you observe, this is the layer one of the uh, samples. Basically, we uh, gave uh, five samples, uh, four tensile samples, you know, micro tensile samples and one cube. And uh, two are horizontally oriented and two are vertically oriented, right? And uh, as we uh, print them layer by layer, uh, the information would be provided to us, uh, just like how uh, you get it in your FDM printer as well. Right. The shaded portion is actually the recoder moving. So uh, second layer is starting to print. So likewise, you can understand briefly. Uh, further information we will be uh, giving in the demo itself, you know, how to operate the machine, what are the prominent features and all we'll be covering there. So this is the uh, video taken during the printing process. Uh, basically, we were printing uh, stainless steel plates oriented in the horizontal and vertical directions. <coughs> so basically, the laser is scanning the 
uh, powder selectively in the areas where the uh, metal is required. So once the part is completed, the recoater would be uh, coating the uh, powder freshly. Uh, I'll just go back uh, briefly because uh, you can uh, once the recoater moves to the right direction, you can observe that the build plate is lowered by 40 micrometer layer thickness. It won't be visible that much in the video, but it goes down followed by, you know, uh, uh, dosing of the powder and then moving of the recoater over the uh, already prepared layers. So fresh uh, coat of powder is completed. Then the laser starts scanning once again. Likewise, the process is repeated. Ah, one minute. Yeah. So once the uh, build is completed, we have a proprietary vacuum conveyor, which uh, basically works uh, on the principle of your uh, vacuum cleaner only. So uh, we need uh, inert gases to operate uh, this machine particularly. <coughs> we have a nitrogen generator and uh, using the vacuum conveyor, we can collect the powder from the uh, build chamber. This is very much needed because we can't afford to. Yes. Uh, anyone has any queries? Yeah, some noise is coming. Uh, hello. Ayan, uh, Ayan, do you have any queries? No, I guess no. It is okay. Yes. So uh, this is the overflow chamber, right? So once the uh, recording is completed, a lot of powder would be collected in the overflow chamber. So we can connect the vacuum conveyor to it and we can collect the powder from there as well. We'll be showing all these parts during the demo for a better understanding. So once uh, uh, powder collection is done, we can uh, bring the uh, build chamber outside and elevate the build plate on top so that we can remove the excess powder. And this is the finished parts, you know, horizontal and vertical plates that are still, uh, you know, fixed to the build plate. So using the uh, wire cut EDM process, we generally remove the plates and we give to the uh, customer. So thank you for uh, watching this video. Uh, we'll be uh, going for the live demo shortly. So in case you have any queries during the uh, presentation of this video, please uh, let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Jagdish. Uh, any queries from the participants? I have one okay. question, sir. Yes, yes, please. Hello, Jagdish, can you hear me? Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what is the normal temperature inside this chamber during the metal printing? Uh, so for we are printing stainless steel material so 80 degrees celsius is uh, needed uh, we uh, ah, yeah 100 degrees celsius uh, of uh, temperature is needed uh, for the build plate and uh, we need we use uh, nitrogen gas so uh, point, uh, two percentage of oxygen only needs to be present inside the printer yeah okay so what would be the maximum bed size in case of a metal printing bed size uh, for this printer it is uh, 500 yes, yes. mm uh, 500 mm by 250 mm by 250 mm. That is the work volume we have. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, for sure.
so if uh, no more question we will be going on a live uh, again yes sir sure sir yeah Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, are you audible? Uh, thank you. Uh, so, so this is the uh, print controller software. Ampro print controller. So this is where uh, we uh, set up the parts. For example, I, let me just open uh, two CLI files. Um, they already mentioned. For example, this is a CLI file that is sliced once from the magic software. Now you can observe this is the support structure that was created and uh, you can also see that this is the layer one so as we scroll down a uh, scroll up layer wise information is provided and after some point of time solid uh, uh, layer is observed okay. so this is the part setup window next one would be a machine control which is very very much necessary so I'll just give you a brief command on how to uh, move the uh, recorder. So here you can see uh, we can move the recorder in steps or we can go to the minimum or maximum position. So let me just give the minimum or maximum position. And once I uh, put the arrow button, you can see the recorder is moved. So this is needed for manual control of the recorder during the alignment process. And uh, the next important option would be the build platform movement, right? Build platform is the part below the build plane. So you can just observe if I'm giving point to one and uh, press the up button out. Okay. So if we uh, give uh, 10 units and uh, move the up, that up button, you can observe that build plate is coming up. So you can observe that the twin laces are situated above. So as of now, we are just using only one laser as we don't have uh, two recorder blades. But if you use uh, two recorder blades and two lasers, the time required to print would be uh, reduced right, completely. So the bottom part you can see is the build chamber. Using the chamber installation uh, button, you can control the a build chamber motion. So first we need to bring it down and then we can bring it out.
once the, the chamber is completely so we are bringing the build chamber outside So uh, here you can just see uh, these are all the parts that we have printed previously. So the next option I'd be uh, telling will be uh, uh, as you can see this is the uh, build plate. So uh, which is obtained by 250 mm and then print up to 20 mm as I said. And this would be the overflow chamber. So once the uh, so this is the overflow chamber. So whenever we are uh, collecting the powder, we can just pour it over here. We can connect the vacuum conveyor at the bottom so that powder recovery would, recovery would be very easy. So this is your uh, process chamber. As I already uh, mentioned, this is a powder-based process. So this is called a silo, wherein we load the powder and uh, manual valves are provided to allow the powder to come inside. So if we open the wall over here and then uh, the valve is opened uh, pneumatically from the print controller, powder will be collected here. So the next step would be to drive the screw feeder. So this is a screw feeder arrangement, which is used to Bring the powder onto the recoder that is over the right side. So these are all the filtering arrangements to ensure that no contaminants are there. Uh, this is the uh, laser. So here you can uh, control the inert gas pressure and uh, manual controls are also provided, but uh, we need not touch them as uh, we can uh, control them uh, from the software. So, so lines for nitrogen air are all connected over here. This is the backside of the uh, printer. And these are the two walls that are necessary to ensure that proper uh, nitrogen and air are provided to the printer. So this is the explosive vacuum cleaner. This is only used when the, in the case of, uh, you know, dirty powder or uh, collecting, uh, uh, you know, scraps or in those, those cases, we need not uh, touch them. We can uh, easily use this explosion proof vacuum cleaner and then, uh, you know, dispose them off. So this is the, this is the vacuum conveyor arrangement that I use, I shown in the video. So basically, with this, sorry. So uh, with this hose, we'll be collecting the powder. So using this conveyor, the silo will be filled with the powder that is co uh, collected from the build plate. This is a decanter unit, and this is the saving unit. So here the powder collected from the build plate will be placed over here and an empty silo will be placed over here so that the saving unit will be recycling the powder. So basically we'll be having a sea uh, with the size of around uh, 50 micrometers and uh, that will be used 
filter to sieve the powder. Any contaminants or uh, sub particles will be filtered over here and fresh part, fresh powder will be collected over here. And uh, using this monitor, we can easily uh, see uh, whether it is inerting or not and how much powder is collected and uh, those kind of informations can be updated. So this is, this is the sand blasting unit. Then used to uh, remove any dust particles from the finished part. Now we will be proceeding to the uh, compressor and nitrogen generator unit. I will be just uh, basically demonstrating what are all the necessary things that are uh, needed to uh, run the build process. This is basically the air compressor that is used to operate the uh, pneumatic valves and other important stuff. This is the air dryer, drying unit. This is the water chiller unit, which is needed for operating the laser. And this is the nitrogen unit. So only when the nitrogen uh, output is 99.99%, we should uh, start the uh, build process to ensure that uh, the build is uh, taking place in the inert atmosphere as much as possible. So uh, during additive manufacturing processes, we either use argon or nitrogen. Uh, Ampro recommends nitrogen generator for all the bits. So with Ampro, uh, uh, this is a commercial printer. So titanium 6 AL4V, uh, stainless steel 316L, inconel uh, 615 and 718, uh, cobalt chromium molybdenum, and these uh, parts can be printed if powders are available. Coming back to the printer once again. I'll just demonstrate the uh, cycle option. This is the uh, part where we fix the material settings, that is the parameters. We have already uh, input the parameters in the uh, uh, window here. We have separate parameters for core, down skin, up skin, top layer handling, etc. How much powder, uh, power, speed, beam offset, hash distance. So based on these things, energy density will be automatically calculated. Support structure setting, hat setting, and everything. So we have uh, fixed the parameters for aluminum, silicon, 10 mg, inconel, and stainless steel so far. So in the machine control cycle uh, button, you would uh, select the 316L stainless steel uh, parameters and inner chamber to 0.2%. So only 0.2% of oxygen is needed. And the preheating of uh, bed needs to be done to 100 degrees Celsius. Only when both of these are achieved, the build will automatically start. So this is the powder system. Once we uh, switch on the, uh, once we turn on the valve, we have to confirm this silo. So basically this says that <coughs> the recoater is not full and the hopper is not full. Once we open the wall, the sensor will pick it up automatically and it will turn to green. So once we confirm the silo, we should open the silo wall from here and we can switch on the screw feeder uh, start manually or you can also recoater, you can also prime the recoater. Priming is nothing but filling the recoater. Purging is nothing but removing the powder from the recoater. These options are given to us for uh, all the purposes. Filter system is kept here. So uh, the circuit and everything is uh, given and uh, we need not touch any stuff over here. And this is the camera. So once the build is uh, started, we can uh, view the building process from the camera and uh, powder spread. Uh, powder spread is uh, very much needed because we have to align the build plate pro properly and only if it's aligned properly, the spread would be uniform without any gaps or anything. So uh, Using the camera, we can monitor the build process and the powder uh, spread and recoating everything. Yeah. So this covers the entire uh, build process. Yeah. I'll hand it over to Dr. Tarisalam sir. Yeah. For yeah. So um, we are shortly moving again to FDM. Um, over to you, Vignesh. Uh, if you are ready, you, you can show a few layers, and then we will close the session after uh, Q and A. Vignesh, sure, sir. <coughs> Sir, 
sir uh, i hope uh, you are able to view my screen right yes yes it is visible okay sir one minute yes so uh, totally 103 layers uh, after the tessellation of that particular uh, bottle sample now 24th layer is uh, printing is going on uh, so here you can see the uh, two uh, pins are uh, moving and uh, the printing process is going on So till now, 23 layers completed. Now, uh, 24th layer uh, printing process is going on. So once uh, all the 103 uh, layers, uh, 104 layers, uh, 103 layers has been completed, we will get the final pro uh, uh, printed component. Then we will go for the post uh, processing. Finally, we'll get the actual uh, bottle, which is uh, uh, record for our uh, final requirement. And uh, here we can able to see the uh, material, how much material ABS and QS are going to be used for printing this component. And uh, what is the size uh, and the slicing height, all those summary also we can able to see in this um, uh, summary section of that particular display. Okay, fine, Vignesh. I think it's fine. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. So, Dr. Subhajit, I think we have done with that. Uh, so, if any queries, uh, we are very glad to answer and hope uh, we managed uh, the live demo uh, with the limited bandwidth and other uh, stuffs with the mobile itself. And uh, yes, any queries from the partsman, you are welcome to uh, take over um, any uh, kind of uh, consultancy and R&D work. We are uh, uh, doing a lot of uh, things for industry. Uh, as well as for academic need and uh, the flat sample what we have shown it is uh, that we have printed for uh, one phd student from uh, chennai and if any such requirements are there uh, probably we are very glad to uh, take care of if possible that we can do it within the uh, our uh, build capability so being a twin laser system uh, we have a very good productivity and uh, yeah so uh, Thank you for the participants uh, being patiently looking at the live demo and hope uh, it gives some information about uh, what is 3D printing, how we are uh, able to uh, build a job over it and uh, all other later stuff. Any question uh, we can uh, shortly answer or otherwise we'll close the session. Thank you, Dr. Subhajit, for giving me an opportunity. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. That was really a wonderful session. And also, we would like to thank uh, Jagdish Bhaskaran and Vignesh, yeah, your scholars, uh, who have yeah. really helped us and demonstrated the entire procedure. It was really a very good session, I guess. And uh, we have been able to grasp a lot of things, a lot of uh, instruments that you have. Uh, okay. Any queries from the participants? Mohanty, sir, would you like to say something? Sir, yes, sir. Sir, can you yeah. hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, are you audible? Yes, yes. Sir, thank you very much, sir, for your wonderful sessions and live demonstration, sir. Definitely, yeah. sir, um, all the participants grasp the many knowledge on the metal printing. Great, sir. As we have also seen first time, sir, metal printer, sir, okay. from your site. We have printer, 3D printer, but it is PLA, sir. Okay. Uh, so, okay. first time we have seen your 3D printer, uh, it was good, sir, very good, sir. So, definitely, if we need any type of uh, metal printing work, definitely we will connect with you, sir. Please, sir, please, please. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, thank sir, you. for your... Thank you, Professor uh, Mohanty, for your nice words. Yes, yesterday and today you have given a wonderful session, sir. Very nice. Thank Fantastic. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
thank you dr subhajit also i am closing the meeting <clears throat> thank you sir thank you thank you for your time yeah and hopefully in near future we would definitely like to host you at our institute physically fantastic i am very glad to do that okay thank you sir thank, thank you. you thank you yeah bye bye thank okay, you thank you sir thank you it was a great session sir thank you thank you thank you all uh, so with this we come to the end of the first session of day 2 uh, we will join back again for the second session uh, which is starting from 2:30 pm so i request all the participants to kindly join us back at 2:30 pm today for the second session thank you all and we will be sharing the links of the recorded videos uh, in the whatsapp group uh, you can refer to that uh, anytime uh, whenever it is required we will be sharing it shortly thank you all thank you sir thank you sir